let us kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship help me say
We know that we can't do nothing without the Lord. Can't do nothing, can't go nowhere, can't move a limb without the Lord in charge of everything. So we are asking you that we welcome you, everybody here as we come. And first we will have our announcement by, and our welcome by our, thank you, Sister Eric again. Good morning. Good morning. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Today we come to rejoice and to thank God for allowing us to make it to another first Sunday. Today is the first Sunday in February and we are so grateful that we have made it through the first month of 2024. God has blessed us to see this Sunday. Uh, we don't know about the rest, but we are here today and we thank God for it. We thank God for all of you, and we want you to know that you are welcome here today and always. Uh, I have a couple of announcements from Pastor Dom. Uh, we will resume our virtual Bible study on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We will study the book of Hebrews. Information on how to join us on Zoom is on our Facebook page or on, or on our website at epbcsf.com. This month is Black History Month. It's February, and we will celebrate during our Heritage Sunday service on the third Sunday of February with an old-time religion service. We are asking all members to wear your African heritage outfits or the colors red, black, and green on that Sunday. Again, that's the third Sunday of February. Join us for our old-time religion service. I have a couple of announcements that I just want to remind you of. Uh, there's announcements on the freeway that says, be careful. <laughs> and so with the what, severe weather that we should avoid travel. But we thank God we made it, right? <laughs> we made it, we made it. We didn't see that sign until we were underneath it. But we thank God for, for allowing us to make it safely. It says severe weather and we should avoid travel on Monday, on Sunday and Monday. Uh, we'd like to say happy birthday to uh, those celebrating birthdays during the month of February. Deacon Rowler's birthday will be on the 17th. Uh, little Keith, his grandson, is on the 19th. And then his granddaughters, Kalia and Kanaya, their birthdays will be on the 20th. And to all of you, we say happy birthday. Uh, we ask for traveling grace for Brother Clarence Cummings, who is actually sick in Louisiana right now. We ask that you keep him in your prayers, that God might be with him and he might recover speedily. Um, we're continuing to pray for the honor of Sister Josephine Lee. Her Aunt Vicki is uh, doing better. I asked her this morning. She said Aunt Vicki was doing better, but we ask that you continue to keep them in your prayers. Uh, I have another announcement, and that is the Cornerstone Baptist Church will be having a hip, uh, uh, the Hiller Nation will be having a women's conference. It's called Shift Her. The guest speaker will be uh, Sister Yvonne K. Park. Uh, and other guests will be Vanessa, Minister Vanessa Bailey, Evangelist Elizabeth Hudson, Evangelist Demetria Hillman, and Lady Annette L Lady. And that will be on February 17th. That was the date right here. But it's February 17th at 10 a.m from 10 to 3 at the Cornerstone Baptist Church. For registration information, um, just let me know and I'll be happy to share it with you. But that's February 17th at the Cornerstone Baptist Church at 10 a.m. Today is Black History Month and our Black History hero for today is Jane Bolin. And that's B-O-L-I-N, Bolin. Jane Bolin was the first black woman in the United States to become a judge in 1939 when New York Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia appointed her to the task. But that wasn't her only first. She was the first black woman to graduate from Yale Law, the first to join the in New York City Bar Association, and the first to work in the office of New York City's Corporation Council. Bolin was born in Northern New York in 1908 to a black and Native American father and white and British mother, and early on had to navigate life growing up in a world that condemned her parents' marriage. 
Her father had a first of his own as he was the first black student at Williams College and he started his own law practice. So Bowling grew up around all of his books and cases. She matriculated to Wellesley College and was one of two black women in her freshman class. The two of them were, were assigned as roommates in a family's apartment off of the campus. Just one of the episodes of racism she speaks of later that she encountered at the school. Oh, sorry. But she rose above it and became a Wellesley Scholar in 1928 when she graduated, which was given to the top 20 students in the class. Even though she was the top of her class at Wellesley, when she spoke to the guidance counselor about pursuing a career in the law, she was told that there were few opportunities for women in law and none at all for a black woman. Even her father tried to dissuade her from the course of law because according to the New York Times, lawyers had to work with the, uh, the, the most unpleasant and sometimes grossest kind of human behavior. But he saw that Bowling was going to fight for the career that she wanted, and so he threw his support behind her. Jane Bowling attended Yale Law and was the first black woman to get her law degree. She had a series of firsts, as previously mentioned, she also became the first black woman to join the New York City Bar Association. Bolin started working at her father's law office. She couldn't find a job at other places because of her gender, and then started practicing law with her first husband, Ralph Mizell, who died in 1943. In 1937, she was appointed assistant corporation counsel to the city of New York, the first black woman the first black woman hired for the job. And then in 1939, she became the first black judge when she was sworn in as a judge of domestic relations court, now called family court at the World's Fair. Bowling worked tirelessly as a judge to halt segregation and racism. She required child care agencies to accept children of all races and ethnicities when they required public funding. She also stopped the practice of assigning probation officers based on religion and race. She was a judge for 40 years and stepped down when she reached the mandatory retirement age of 70 in 1978. She died on January 8, 2007 at the age of 98 and created a path through the legal system for others wanting to serve. She was an icon of hope and empowerment for women throughout her life and she paved the way for others, like our own First Lady, Minnie. <laughs> uh, we thank God for uh, Sister, I would say Sister Jane Bowling, Mrs. Jane Bowling, Judge Jane Bowling, and for Judge Mimi as well. And we ask that you continue to remember those who have paved the way for all of us. Uh, there's so many, so many, so many. But we thank God for Pastor Don sharing that information with us this morning. And we ask that you continue to study and continue to look for our heroes, uh, not just our heroes of faith, but actual heroes that we, uh, that, that paved the way for us throughout history. And those are your announcements. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. We thank God for the credit there. Announcement, don't make these announcements and going on. We know that uh, God is with her. And God is with all of us if we come and praise and glorify his name. Thank you for being here this morning, and we just love you because God has put us here. And just pray for me as we go through this service this morning. I'm here, I praise the Lord, and I love it. I love you all too. God bless this morning as we come and worship and praise and glorify his name. Well, we come to a point where God has asked us, the Bible tells us, uh, to do some things that we must do for the Lord. Amen. So he's blessed us, so he should bless us. He blessed us, we ought to bless him. Amen. We ought to bless him. He says in the Bible, says, will God, will a man rob God? Let you have robbed, but you have robbed him. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? The Bible says, in tithe and offering. 
You are cursed with the curse, but you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all ye the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now and end this, says the Lord of hope. If I would not open the door windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there would be not room enough to receive. Uh, we like to thank uh, our mother here. She, yeah. you, you might not know it, but she said and she's, she she saves all of these scriptures there. I was sitting in front of her, and every time somebody says something, she know what they're talking about. Yeah. She yeah. works and reads right. the word of God. We thank you for being here. And now in the hands of our officer. Amen.
Father God, yes. Almighty God, yes. the ones that stand high, my yes. Father, and look low, all of us recognize the fact that we don't do nothing of our own. Yes. But we pray, my Father, that God will lead and guide yes. us to yes. every day of our lives. We pray, my Father, for each member of this church. We pray for members of the, every church that's open in your land. We pray, my Father, for those that are in the hospital. We pray, my, my Father, for Brother Clarence coming. We pray for Sister Egypt Gates, my Father. We pray for each one that is standing here this morning. Those that are in the hospitals and those that are my father know you not in the pardon of their sin. But you have told us, my father, to pray for each person. And we just thank you that we are able to pray for them. We thank you for the life that you enabled us to live, Lord. We haven't always been on your side, but we thank you that we know you in the pardon of our sin. And we just pray, my father, to you morning, noon, and night. All the day long, my Father, every step we take, we don't take it on our own. We take it because, my Father, you brought us one more time here in the house of prayer. Bless these that are standing before the altar. Bless those that are in the hospital. Bless those that are walking the streets of the city. Bless those, my Father, that don't, don't think they know that they have to be. My Father, follow your will and your way. Bless us as we continue to strive to be just like you. Bless us as we continue to try and do your will as we do it for your, your blessings and your grace. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.
we thank you all today. Yes. Thank, you. thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you. God, you've been so good to us. Yes. And we come to give you all the praise that you deserve. Yes. Lord, we ask you to send us a word on today. Give us a word that will encourage us, that will enlighten us. Give us a word that will bring us into your presence on today. So that we can leave this place better than when we came. So we can tell the dying world just how great of a God you are to us. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise on today. God is great. Truly, truly great and worthy to be praised. We are yes, so yes, delighted to be in the house of the Lord on today. Thank you. I don't know the weather, weather man said we should not travel, but thanks be to God that we are here. Amen. 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 Those that decide to stay home, that's quite all right. Uh -huh. But God is great. Yes, he, is. And he continues to bring us through. Uh, any situation. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take our Bible at this time. Let's turn to the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Towards the end of the New Testament. Book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to begin at verse number 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse number 23. The word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that speaks to us as follows. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. May the Lord bless your reading and the hearing of his most precious word. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. I want to use that scripture this morning to speak to you using the subject, Good News for Unfinished People. All right. All right. Good News for Unfinished People. We are walking through this life and we have all kinds of gifts, all kinds of blessings that are bestowed upon us. We are living and we are walking on the shoulders of many who have prayed for us, many who have paved the way for us, many people who have gone through many things just so we could be in the house of the Lord on today. And we thank the Lord on today because he is so fit that we are his children. We thank the Lord on today and he's so fit that we are all his child. But because just because we are his children doesn't mean we are perfect. We go through life and every single day we stumble along the way. There is a heartache that jumps at us. There's an obstacle that's in our way. Many things that deter us sometimes from the ways and the wills of God. And because of this, we are sometimes seen as being unfinished people. What lets us know we are unfinished is because we go through trials and tribulations. What lets us know we are unfinished is because we still stumble on our sins. What lets us know we are unfinished, we still have thoughts in our minds that are against God's will. We may fall down, but we still get up. We still may slip, but God still makes a way for us. We may still be unfinished people, but the good news is that God has a way 
of always picking us up. He always has a way of picking up the pieces. The song does say we fall down, but we get up. But the only reason we're able to get up is because the Lord picks us up. That's why Paul declares in the word, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And I wonder if I have any witnesses in the house who can testify, I may be unfinished, but I thank God I'm still here. I may be unfinished, but thank God he's still working in my life. The old folks used to say, I'll say it this way, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as good as gold. Is there anybody here who is excited about the fact that you serve a God who, even though you may be unfinished, is still working on your behalf? The good news for us who are unfinished people is that God is still working. He's working in our lives. And the first words of our text on this morning tells us, may the God of peace. Yes. And that is enough for us to shout about right there. Yes. Because of all the trials and tribulations, yes. because of all the heartaches and pains, uh -huh. because of all of the sorrow and grief, yes. it's expected for us to be stressed out. Ooh. It's expected for us to become overwhelmed. It's expected for us to see nothing but the worst of life. But the God that we serve, he becomes our peace. It is faith in Jesus that brings us away from the conflict and brings us into the peace of God that is originally designed for us to have. And I wonder if there anybody here who's so glad that you can find peace in the Lord. No matter what's going on around you in your life, you can find peace in the Lord. No matter the mess that you find yourself in, you can find peace in the Lord. Yes, times may be hard. Yes, the storms may be raging. But as long as the Lord is with you in your life, you can find peace. In your heart. Scripture tells us a few things about the good news for unfinished people. The first good news that he tells us is that God will set you apart. The idea behind the word sanctify is to set apart. To make something different. To make something distinct. Breaking old associations and forming new associations. It brings the idea of someone wearing a dress. A dress is just a dress. But uh, Sister, uh, I was going to say it. Sister Gibson, she knows that a wedding dress is sanctified. It's set apart for a special and glorious purpose. God wants us to be set apart to him. Yes, we are to be in the world, but God says we are not to be of the world. He wants us to be set apart. He wants us to be sanctified people in this world. What does that mean when people go one way God says, go the other. When God, when the people wants to flow in a certain direction, God says, go against the current. You are to be set apart from everybody else. So when people look at you, 
They ought to say there's something different about him. There's something different about her. What is it that is setting them apart from everybody else? And we ought to proclaim it is the Lord. Jesus the Christ that lives inside of us. It is the Lord who has blessed us in a mighty way. It is the Lord who has given us the strength. It is the Lord who has given us understanding. It is the Lord who brings us into his wisdom. It is the Lord who guides our every footsteps. Is there anybody here who can give God praise and say, Lord, I thank you for sanctifying me. I thank you for setting me apart so I can be about my father's business and be a witness for the Lord. He says, he will set you apart. He will sanctify you. But not just a part of you. But he says he will set you apart. He will sanctify the whole you. He says completely. The adjective occurring only here in the New Testament is a word that means whole. Entire. Until the very end. Its basic connotation is wholly attaining the end reaching the intended goal. And hence it has the force of no part being left unreached. In other words, as long as you're breathing, God is working on your life. As long as you're walking here on earth, God is still perfecting you. God is still making you whole. God is still making sure that no matter where you are or no matter the steps that you're taking, he is there working on your behalf. Isn't it good to know that God loves you enough that he doesn't miss a part of you, even the ugly part of you, even the dark side of you. God said, I will not stop until the whole person is set apart on my behalf. Is there anybody here who recognizes the fact that as long as God is in my life, I have work to do for him because he has sanctified me and made me whole. God will sanctify you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet so that you can be more and more like Christ. It's good to know that we may not be perfect here on this earth, but when the Lord comes back, when we are faced with him face to face in glory, the Bible says we will be complete. We will be made perfect. We will be just like Christ. And that's something to look forward to. Yes, it's hard down here. But we need to keep on pushing. Knowing that God has a plan for us. Yes, it gets so tough down here. But we ought to keep on striving. Because God has a plan for our lives. God will complete his work in us. Not only is the good news that God will set you apart, but the other good news is that God will preserve you. The idea is that each believer's spirit and soul and body would be preserved completely. Not meaning that we will die of physical death, but that we will be without sin inside our spirit and soul and outside our body. That we, when the time comes, will be without blame when Jesus returns. Of course, believers struggle with sin. 
of course we go through life and we stumble along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we live with what Paul calls a double nature. Well, we have the old and we have the new. Yeah, yeah. But clearly it is possible that by living according to God's will, by loving one another and by serving God faithfully, yeah. we can reach a point of maturation and total readiness for Jesus when he comes back. Yeah. This is partly because we can confess of our sins. Well, and Jesus will, in fact, forgive us yeah, of our sins. Yeah, and the Bible says he will restore us to fellowship with him. That's why we can rejoice. That's why we can give God the glory. That's why we can praise him and thank him every day. Because he gives us the chance that we can come to him and say, Father, forgive me. For I have done wrong unto you. And we know for a fact that he will throw our sins to the side. And he will say, you are forgiven. As a matter of fact, the Bible said every single morning, we wake up with new mercies. Which means we wake up with a clean slate. And we can walk in the way that God has called for us to walk. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad today that in spite of what I have done, in spite of the mess I may be in, I can just turn to the Lord and He will hear my cry and He will sanctify me. He will set me apart and He will preserve my body And we should be sober to the reality that God will hold us fully accountable oh, yeah. for our sins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, he will forgive. But we will have to pay the price. We, yes, we sin. But we will defer some of the rewards that he has for us in glory. So just because we go to him and say, I, for, I, I give my life to him uh -huh. doesn't mean we have the right to continue to say it. Right. He says there are rewards for us in heaven. Yes. It is up to us to live the right life right. in order to obtain the rewards he has set aside for us. Right. But then we ought to have in our minds and our hearts that even though we may stumble, yeah. even though we will go against his will, yeah. that he is faithful to forgive. Yeah. And he preserves us yeah. for his glory. Yeah. The good news for unfinished people right. is that he will set us apart. Yeah. That he will preserve us. Yeah. But finally, the good news is that God will be faithful. He says, he who calls you is faithful. Yeah, yeah. And he will surely do it. Yeah. God is faithful to do this work in our lives. As we look to him. And as we trust in him. And as we surrender to him. And as we abide in him. God will do all these things in our lives. He will make us blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we trust in him. Yeah. That's God's promise to us. Right. Often we doubt it. Well. We doubt the fact that God will be with us. Oh, yeah. We doubt the fact that God will bring us out. Oh, yeah. We doubt the fact that he will see us through some situations. Yeah. We think that we are good enough. Oh, yeah. We see our sins and Know that they don't please God. Uh -huh. And we start to wonder if we are really actually saved. Oh, oh, oh. But God promises us here that he is faithful. Yes, yes. That no matter what 
He will keep his promise. He will do it just for us. He has saved us and will make sure we are saved until the end. The Lord has made us holy. It is all God's work in our lives. The good news is that there is no way we can make it in life without the Lord. But it's because of his faithfulness that we can live. It's because of his faithfulness that we can endure. It's because of his faithfulness that we can persevere. And it is through his faithfulness that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. The song says, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with me. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. And is there anybody here who's glad this morning that God is faithful? Is there anybody here who knows that you would not be here today if it wasn't for his faithfulness? Somebody ought to declare, I believe in the word of God. I believe in his promises. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Somebody ought to declare, I believe he's faithful because he took on his role of glory, put on the role of humanity. I believe in his faithfulness because he walked through the streets of the city being ridiculed and scorned. I believe in his faithfulness because he was whipped and beaten all night long and he never said a mumbling word. I believe in his faithfulness because he carried a heavy cross up a hill called Calvary. Had his hands and his feet nailed to the cross. They lifted him up high so the world can see him die. I believe he is faithful because he hung on the cross all day Friday. The Bible says he hung his head between the locks of his shoulders. The Bible says he could have easily came down. But he stayed faithful because he saw you and me. And he died for your sins. And he died for my sins. And I'm so glad this morning that the story doesn't end right there. For well, they took his body down from the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there for three long days. But early one Sunday morning, he proved that he is still faithful. For he got out of the grave with all power in his hands. And I wonder if there's anybody here who can give God some praise. Because he's still alive today, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me. I'm so glad this morning that he still has all power. With that power, he's still in my life. For I found out for myself that he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Is there anybody here on today who can give God thanks? 
because you understand that even though you are still unfinished, God will make a way. Even though you're still unfinished, God will work it out. Even though you're still unfinished, God has a plan and a purpose for you. So no matter what you're going through, just know the good news that he has set you apart. He has preserved you and he is still faithful because you can declare no matter what goes on in my life, God is still there. God is working it out. And everything will work out for your good. It's good to know that God is a faithful God. That he's still in the working business. No matter what goes on in life, you can depend on him. You can trust in him. You can have faith in the fact that no matter where you are, He's right there with you. There may be somebody here on today who needed to hear that God is faithful. Doesn't matter how unfinished you are, God is in the business of making you whole. He's in the business of making things right for you. All you gotta do is trust Him. All you gotta do is have faith and give Him time. And He will show up. On your behalf. Is there anybody here who wants to give their life over to the Lord? All you have to do is believe that He came, that He died, He rose again on the third day. All you got to do is confess in your heart that you are yet indeed unfinished, that you still have sin in your life, and that you need the Lord to forgive you of your sins. All you have to do is ask the Lord to come into your life. The Bible says at that moment, you will be saved. As we stand on our feet, we want to give someone the opportunity to come to the Lord. Is there one?
the Lord's death till he come. Let us come to the longest table in the world. partake of these, your emblems. Lord, we ask right now to forgive us of all of our many sins. Cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. Make us, O oh God, worthy enough to partake of these, this your Lord's supper. And as we partake, our God, we just ask you to take our minds to that faithful afternoon where you sacrificed yourself just for us. Lord, we ask you all these many things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Jesus took bread and he broke it, passed it around, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us all eat together. Also, he took the cup, passed it around. He says, Often as you drink this blood, it's a New Testament in my blood. Do as often as you will. Let us all drink together. Father, we thank you for this time. Yes, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, that you saw fit to be with us as we traveled along the way. Yes, you have been a protection, O oh God. Yes, Father. We ask you to continue to protect us as we leave this place. Yes, Allow us, O oh God, to make it to our various destinations. Yes, Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with us. Yes. Continue to touch every individual yes. that's here on today. Yes. Touch every family that's represented here on today. Yes. Allow us, oh God, to be set apart, yes. to be preserved, to trust in the fact that you are faithful in our lives. So we can tell somebody else just how great of a God you are. Yes. And they too must come to be saved. Lord, we just ask you to continue to bless us. Continue to heal our sick bodies. Continue to mend confused minds. Continue, O oh God, to be with those who are still grieving. Yes. Ask you, O oh God, to put back together broken families. Allow us, O oh God, to walk through open doors of opportunity and close the door in the face of the enemy. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise for all the things that you have done, for all the things you're doing even right now for the things you are going to do in the future. Lord, be with us now, here, forth, and forevermore. The Lord has said, say, amen. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus and his disciples, uh, they went out to the night, sang a song, and they fellowshiped together. 